Genji's paper. Good morning. Um, I'm Ya Tingli, uh, working with Philip Kaiser, and also I'm um, Jinjie is actually on my committee. That's, um, I guess, why I'm picking up this last minute job. Um, <laughs> I'm actually more an event organizer than like a really um, researcher style person. So I'm in charge of like taking pictures and videos and organizing all the hot pot events in the evening. Uh, if you are interested in any of those events or going to museums, you can contact me afterwards. Um, but I hope. This would not be too suffering, and uh, this is an interesting paper itself. And I learned a lot uh, talking to Jinjie this morning at 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> and he got on the plane at 7, so you will be able to see him around after this section, I guess. So this paper is about um, evidence from regional carbon uh, market pilots. It's a little bit different from what he originally planned in the, um, what I guess, um, the agenda because that paper got published which is also a happy coincidence. So this is a different one, but it's going to talk about not really the national market, it's about the pilot that happened um, before this national market came into place. If you still remember um, Cilion's, like timeline from the very beginning, the national market was announced at the end of last year, and the pilot was announced um, very early at the um, October 29th, 2011. So after that, at 2013, so China actually launched the pilots. There are seven of them, and this is going to be what's the evidence we learned from those pilots. I think it is important in the sense that we cannot learn anything about the national market at this point because it's all, you know, invasion and like high-level um, discussion designed by researchers like Jujie and um, Yili and Xiliang. But at this point, we can already learn something from the past. So this is a paper about that. Um, in terms of what's the subject, this is about innovation. Okay, we know that um, from the past that this kind of market not only regulates and reduces emissions, but we also hopefully think that we are going to prom promote innovation. So that's the major topic of this paper. What's the motivation? Um, I was not listening too carefully to the previous um, talks because I was reading the paper. But there's, um, regarding to China's carbon market, there's one thing that's um, a little bit maybe different from other markets in the sense that China always wants to um, tackle different things all together or in a harmonious manner. So regarding carbon market, it not only kind of wants to reduce the carbon, but also in the sense that it really cares about what's the economic growth consequence. So it wants to do it cost effectively, but also want to do it to maybe accelerate the supply side, uh, supply side structural reform. Actually, accelerate the innovation, so in a, in a sense that it can produce some kind of growth in the future. So this is the background of why um, innovation at this specific context is kind of important. Um, I will not talk so much about the previous um, literature because I have no time to read them in the past three hours. But the two highlights uh, Jin Jie gave me, one is, it seems that the change in relative price due to climate change regulation usually spurs the invention of economic use of the effective factor. Okay. And the second one I think I'm a little bit more familiar with, I think it comes from Potter, um, who started Venus. If you have the environmental regulations um, that is strict but flexible, strict in the, set, in the sense that people actually believe you're going to have that regulation, uh, flexible in the sense that you are not really requiring that one single kind of you know, um, applying application. You are giving firms some kind of choice. In this strict but flexible environment, we would expect some kind of innovation. So the paper, as I said, basically trying to test whether or not the previous ETS pilots have an impact on the induced innovation in low carbon technologies. And similarly, um, you might think about whether it is going to crop out innovation in other sectors. So this is the two main hypotheses um, the paper is going to test. And the contributions, uh, first of all, this is China's regional ETS, um, not US, not California. Um, this is 
going to identify the effect of it. So kind of learning the lessons in an empirical study way. Um, the contribution, the other one is that we put together like this data set at firm level. I will go into details in um, later slides, so I'll not repeat myself. Um, I think we have not covered this photo before in this section. So this is before the national one, where are the seven pilots located? Um, I guess I will just point out one important um, sequence of this um, palace. First of all, there are seven, and they are all announced at the, um, as I said, October 29th, 2011. Um, but they are not all launched, you know, on the first day of 2013. There's a sequence of them. And the sequence is actually pretty easy to remember because the first one is Shenzhen, which is also the first one that uh, went through the reform and opening up back in 1978. Um, and then following it, um, usually in China we have this, um, what you call, when you do a pilot or when you do a pioneer thing, you go from Shenzhen, which is um, here, and actually go upward along the coast to the center of Beijing. Uh, that's also one of the major roads that if you want to become the president of China, um, there's two ways you can choose. One of them is you need to go from the bottom of the coastal area from Shenzhen and work your way up along the coast region because that's very developed. The other way is you can start from inner land, which is where I come from and which is also where the Belt and Road Initiative was and work from inner land to the coast. But anyway, so this gives you the different sequence and because of that sequence, there's, we can do um, we, I mean, the authors can do the diff in diff, and in diff analysis because of the sector and because of the sequence and because of the coverage of different um, locations. So sectors, um, as Sina has set up, electricity is really the most important ones. Um, but here I want to mention that one of the very important features of these different pilots are they actually are, have different sector coverage. So it's not that one uniform thing that's being applied to every single province. Because of this difference, um, you know, you're doing a different diff. So there's a good side of having uh, variations. And the other different diff is along the timeline, as I just mentioned. So what would you re uh, expect? First of all, on the, let me see, which one is this? Yes. On the right, if you start uh, with the right figure. Okay, um, when I was thinking through this, I was thinking about if you don't have any environmental regulation, okay, you start from very simple um, rationales. If you don't have any environmental regulation, what would you expect, right? Because environment or carbon kind of thing are externalities, right? We usually think firms are not going to take into account by themselves. So we would basically try to guess that you know treaty sectors, which are the ones that emit a lot, would not have lots of you know low carbon pa patients uh, in comparison to the control uh, sectors. Okay. Uh, this is in the this is in the non ETS zone. So if there's no regulation, this is what uh, the What's the word? This is what the uh, other parallel word would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the one in the ETS zones. This is the one that's under control. You can see uh, two things. First of all, before this uh, 2011, which is the year they use that uh, the policy has been announced. Okay. Before this, you can see the trends are pretty close. And then after, it seems that in the ETS zones, the trade sectors and the con are um, kind of like catching up with the um, control sectors. So from this very descriptive figure, you can already see that there's some influence. Okay, this um, low carbon pilots, uh, this carbon pilots have some influence on the number of low, pa uh, low carbon patents. You may be wondering what's the low carbon patents. So this is being defined uh, by UNFCCC criteria. So they have a list, and with the data set, they're able to figure out 
what set of the uh, data are belonging to the low carbon pigments and what are not. So the uh, empirical uh, specification is kind of very straightforward because uh, as I already described, it's a diff in diff in diff approach. So here you have um, Y, which is the patent um, applications, which is the number of the applications. And this is, as I said, um, defined by the UFCCC um, criterions. And there's the main uh, part of the specification, which the first one is whether or not it's in the pilot region, okay, so whether or not it's in the seven. Um, the sector is whether or not it's the sector listed in, the, in that long table I showed earlier. Um, and the post, this, is, this describes, you know, the time frame. Um, what's the time that you start to have that um, regulation in place? And the controls are obviously very important. Uh, here, uh, they control the capital, cash, revenue, debt, net, sales, and profits. So, just one caveat, these are all public listed firms. Because they need to control something and only the information for these firms because they're financially traded. Um, are actually available. So this is more a uh, data availability issue. Um, and then if, as in a different view, you would control like form sector and all the other things that you include in the um, interactions. So here comes the data, which is actually pretty uh, impressive. I don't know why Jin didn't ask me to work on a paper that, with him using this great data set. I will talk to him later on this. But, <laughs> So first of all, they have this obviously firm level financial and accounting data. Okay, this I think they got it from the stock market accounting research. And then they have this firm level patent data which the web script from the patent office. And I think the most magical part is they are actually able to match the data together. Usually with the name of Chinese firms and you know, all the characters there, and they are not always described as the same name. It's very hard to merge them together. But somehow, they are able to do this. So this is very impressive data set putting together, and here is, uh, here is the main result. So in the baseline model, because it's a diff in, diff in, diff, you can see that what, you would, what matters most are these coefficients. Um, and here are all the controls and the number of operations. Uh, this is the year um, by year, so it's um, the, firm, the number of firms multiply um, all the years. So the first column is what happens to the environmental patent. And the basically, the most important thing is the sign is significantly positive, which means the fact that there's um, carbon market pilots makes the firms in these sectors, in that place, having more patents over time compared to those uh, in a non-regulated place. Okay, I'm not sure my explanation of diff in diff, diff um, coefficient is exactly right. But basically you can think about, okay, you're comparing these two regions in and out of the carbon market and you're comparing firms before and after in and out of the sectors. Um, because of the dimension, it's a little bit hard, but basically it is positive. And when you move to, to the second column, which is um, the non-environmental patent, okay, these are not the target of this policy. So you would, re you would almost already guess that there should not be an effect. If there's an effect, maybe there's something wrong with your regression. Um, so here, gladly, um, there's no effect showing up for the non-environmental patient. And the last one is just the ratio um, between the environmental patent over the, I think it's over the total patent. It's just showing the intensity or the shear of environmental patent among all the patent is also growing up with this carbon market innovation. So basically, I think usually you could just stop here, but because it's an economic, economic paper, it have to have all the other things that's following. So now it comes. Um, the first caveat is some of you might know, I guess, and Jindia actually maybe published this paper too. Um, it's although these are the pilots, they are not they are not all true pilots in some sense. So they are not, you know, active um, 
treatings and really, um, you know, strict um, enforcement. Some of them um, turned out to be more or less fake, which is uh, you can show here using the turnover rate. You know, the, the volume, the trading volume on the market, your share of the total allowance is pretty low. And in some of the cases, there's even the rumor that they basically have a firm which is faking all the tradings. So given this, you might not just want to use that, you know, a dummy variable for whether or not it's a common um, trading region. You want to think about whether or not the intensity of the trading also has some influence. And the two measures um, they use for intensity, one is the carbon price and the other is this turnover rate. And the carbon price um, is also changing among all the regions. So here is the one that's changed what's been here as the ETS, which is the dummy variable for carbon markets, to the carbon price and turnover rate. Um, as you can see, the, the magnitude definitely changed because the matter changes, but the sign is still positive. So they pass their first um, test they try to pass. Um, the second one is the one that using the uh, actually let me see. So this these are just the, the two that one using the carbon price and the other using the turnover rate. And the further thought, um, which is this one, is thinking about the invention patent. Why thinking about the invention patent? Because in China, there's a classification which separates out <coughs> invention from xingxing, which I guess is utility. Utility, okay. U utility innovation. Yeah. Yeah. I think in I think in Porter's sentence, it might be something like incremental changes. So this um, this like basically trying to say, okay, so it's really spurring the innovation in those you know, highly intensive, the ones that really require lots of research. Okay, not the ones that's making like incremental changes. This is basically the point of this slide. And there's a lot of other robust checks um, using different alternative specifications, using different measures of innovations. Because there are not just one, uh, you know, definition for low carbon. There are different regulations, and China has itself um, different catalogs they can use. So they use all of these things, and different classifications of the technology, and also a uh, possible test of um, other treatment. Um, so what's the policy implication? So when I went through the tables, I didn't really um, focus a lot on whether or not the magnitude itself is actually significant, right? So the science is positive and statistically significant, whether or not it's economically significant, whether or not it's really making any difference. So this policy implication part is trying to translate what's being the coefficient in those tables in something that's more understandable. So using one of the previous study that says one percent increase in this um, eco innovation is going to lead to a reduction in carbon emission intensity of zero point zero eight one percent. So they use this, apply this to their coefficient, and find out that the innovation induced by the ETS pilots actually contributes to an additional one point five four reduction in carbon intensity every year. Okay, so that's means that it's something that's more or less significant. It may not be as significant as this, this thought it would be because of all the fake part of it, but it's, it's having some influence. This is, I guess, what's the main takeaway from this paper. And you may wonder why, given that something are fake and the volume are so low and it's just pilots that you can still have a such influence. I think this is actually the part that um, Chinese carbon market differ uh, with many other common markets because it had a lot of political willingness inside of it. And with all the news uh, you can read about China nowadays, you can almost be certain if you are a businessman that the Chinese government is actually trying to do something. And you can almost be certain with Xi Jinping on the, um, you know, one of the seven most important people in, the, in China that this is going to continue for a while instead of US which is changing president so often. Um, and with other things. Uh, but basically that difference gives firm a very consistent 
expectation, which is important here. So if the firm only have a short view expectation that, okay, this is a pilot, and you can almost you know, abandon this approach every now and then, you may not try to do any innovation. But given this whole um, national markets framework and the willingness of the government, the firms have this expectation that in the long term, they may as well have to do something. That's why with all the thickness of the carbon markets pilots, you are still able to see this transformation and the fact that the firms actually are doing innovations to improve the low carbon technology. Uh, thank you, that's the last slide. Excellent. Thank you. Maybe a special play. I think I'm now thinking like a good assignment in my PhD class would be to give them three hours to prepare a presentation, <laughs> to give a presentation <laughs> on the PhD class uh, on paper they've never seen before. Do I do folders first or do you yeah.